Hey everyone this is Kamran and today we're going to talk about the transport protocols we're going to look at what the TCP and UDP are and what are the differences between them and what are the different scenarios in which you should prefer to use TCP or UDP in our last lesson we looked at the TCP IP model we looked at the different layers of the model and we also looked at the protocols which operate at each of the layer we also briefly looked at the transport layer and the protocols which are TCP and UDP which operate at the transport layer let me briefly give you an idea about the transport layer and then we move on to discuss the TCP and the UDP so the transport layer is responsible for getting the data from the application layer and breaking it down into the smaller pieces called packets and also it is responsible for attaching some meta information to each of the packet such as the source and the destination ports and some other information which is used by the receiver's transport layer to combine the data into the singular piece of data which is then given to the application layer all right so let's look at the tcp and the udp protocols now these protocols dictate how the packet transmission from the client to the server is going to look like so first of all we have tcp or transmission control protocol TCP is a connection oriented protocol by connection oriented we mean that after the transport layer receives the data from the application layer and breaks it down into the packets it has to establish a connection with the server and once the connection is established then the packet transmission can start to establish a connection the client and server share a couple of packets called a three way handshake so first of all the client will send a sync packet called synchronize packet to the server which is equivalent to saying hey server i want to establish a connection with you the server is going to receive this packet and it is going to reply with sync ack or synchronize acknowledgement which is equivalent to the server saying hey client i am ready to accept the connection the client is then going to reply with another packet called acknowledge or ack after which the client and server are going to have a connection established and once the connection is established the packet transmission between the client and server can start before we talk about the packet transmission let's look at the packets so the tcp packets are a bit different from the udp packets as we will see in a minute so the tcp packets have special information attached to them which is used to identify the order in which the packets are arranged and this information is used to then combine the packets and then give to the application layer and because of this additional information tied to the packets the header size in the tcp packets is bigger than the udp packets the header size per packet in tcp is 20 bytes all right so once the packet transmission starts in the tcp each packet that gets sent from the client to the server server has to send the acknowledgement back to the client that it has received the packet this delivery acknowledgement helps in implementing the retransmission of packets and reducing the error rates so let's say that the client sends a packet to the server but it never reaches the server and it gets lost in the middle in that case since the server did not receive the packet so it will not send the acknowledgement back to the client in that case the client is going to wait for some time and then retransmit the same packet to the server so the chances of losing a packet is very little and the next feature of tcp is the order delivery so the client can send the packets to the server in any order but the server is going to rearrange the packets in the format that is going to be the sorted one and then it is going to send the sorted packets to the application layer and the last one we have is the congestion control by congestion control we mean that the client can either slow down or make the packet transmission to be faster depending upon the congestion of the traffic in the network so let's say that if our router is very slow and the packets are dropping a lot and the client is not receiving the delivery acknowledgement from the server as much the client will identify that there is some congestion in the network so the packets are getting lost so it will slow down in sending the packets to the server till the congestion is removed All right so let's summarize the TCP protocol before we move on to discuss the UDP protocol. So first of all the TCP packets have the header information which contains the arrangement of the packets and also the header size in TCP is 20 bytes. Secondly the TCP is a connection oriented protocol 
So the client and the server have to open a connection using the three-way handshake in which the client sends a packet called SYN to the server. The server replies with the SYN ACK and then the client sends the ACK packet to the server and then the connection is established. The next one we have is the acknowledgement of the packets. So each packet that gets sent from the client to the server, the server after receiving the packet has to acknowledge that it has received the packet. And if the client does not receive the acknowledgement of the packet in a certain amount of time, it can retransmit the same packet to the server. The next one we have is the order delivery. So the client can still send the packet to the server in any order, but the server is going to wait for all the packets to come and then it is going to rearrange the packets and then it is going to give them to the application layer. And the last one we have is a congestion control. So the client can control the rate at which it is transmitting the packets to the receiver depending upon the congestion on the network. All right, so next we have UDP or user datagram protocol. In the UDP, the packets do not contain the information about the arrangement. So the header size is much smaller than the TCP. The header size in UDP is eight bytes per packet. And also UDP is a connectionless protocol. So when the data comes to the transport layer, it just divides it into the packets and without establishing a connection to the server, it just starts the packet transmission. And also the packet transmission in the UDP is much simpler. So there is no acknowledgement of the packets. So the client can just start sending the packets to the server and the client is not going to wait and see if the server has received the packet or not. Secondly, if the packets are lost during the journey to the server, they are not going to be retransmitted from the client. They're just gone for good. And also there is no order delivery of the packets. So the client can keep sending the packets in any order and the server is not going to rearrange them before sending to the application layer. It is just going to give them to the application layer as they come. And the last one is there is no congestion control in the UDP. So the client is not able to identify the congestion in the traffic and it is going to continue to send the packets at the rate at which it is transferring the packets. All right, so now that we know what TCP and UDP are, Let's look at the ups and downs of both the protocols. The first one we have is TCP. So the TCP is more reliable because of the error control and also the retransmission of the packets which are lost during the transmission. And the other good thing is the congestion control. So in TCP, the client is able to control the rate at which it is transmitting the packets to the server based on the congestion in the traffic. And this helps in reducing the packet loss. The bad thing about the TCP is it is slow because of the three-way handshake and opening a connection in the beginning. And also there is acknowledgement of the packets and also the packet size is also greater as compared to UDP. So each packet has 20 byte header, which includes the arrangement information and so on. TCP is normally used in the cases when we need the strictly reliable data transmission and we can't bear the packet lost but we can bear the slowness of the transmission. For example, the things like file transfer, text messages, and so on. On the other hand, if you look at the UDP, the packets in the UDP are much lightweight. There's only eight byte header in each of the packets. And also because it does not need any connection before the packet transmission. So the packet transmission is much faster as compared to TCP. But the bad thing about UDP is that it is less reliable because the packets which are lost, they are gone and they are not retransmitted from the client. And also there is no congestion control. So for example, if the network is congested and the packets are getting lost, the client is not able to control the rate at which it is transmitting the packets. UDP is normally used in the cases where the speed is more important than the reliability of the packet transmission. For example, video or audio streaming, where you can live with some packets lost during the transmission and also video or audio calls. And that is all for this one. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.